because I am releasing the review a day before Halo Wars comes out and weeks before Ninja Blade comes out in America. Real fast, these are both legit copies. Legit. I don't pirate any games. I buy all my games. No pirating. Why am I doing this? Simply because I don't want to get taken down by no fucking website. Because some loser is upset that I got the game early. Come on. Oh, because the writing show, the writing show, the writing show. What is show? The writing show, the writing show. The writing show. Well, 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 writing show. I'm the review who loves to say son of a bitch. The same review who hates most Nintendo shit. I'm the one who calls games what they are. I even own a 360 and hate Gears of War. Guy who spends his money on games, fucking cards, just a funny guy who became a YouTube star. At first glance, a lot of idiots might assume that Ninja Blade is just another copy of Ninja Gaiden or Shinobi. Even though those copied a lot of games before it, but they don't want to accept that. That's fine. If you want to say that, that's you. If you want to give Ninja Blade a chance, you'll be receiving what I would like to call the God of War for Xbox. Now some might be saying that's a pretty bold statement. Well, watch the rest of the review to find out why I think Ninja Blade is that damn good. The story of Ninja Blade is that these carriers, which are these monsters that you see on the screen, are taking over Japan and infecting people and then using their bodies as hosts. It's a pretty decent story, and you get the idea of this special unit trying to take it out. There's no real complaints, and I do like that that the main character, Ken, is bilingual and speaks both Japanese and English, mixing it up for those most badass moments when he's saying something in Japanese, but it sounds so much more badass. And overall, the story's just a fun ride to go through. All right, man, stay frost. A lot of carriers out here. Yeah, I think I found a few. Don't let them sneak up on you. I'll keep that in mind. The graphics of Ninja Plate are pretty well done. They're not the top, top level, but there's so much going on, such awesome effects, and overall just slick movement in these uh, fighting scenes that you really don't give a shit about uh, the little jaggies you see on buildings and so on. The graphics are nice, not to mention the design is pretty kick-ass. Some might not like how Ken looks, so guess what? You can fully customize him and make him look to your liking. To me, he looks badass in any uniform, and the designs of the monsters look, well, fucking nasty to be honest, but in a good way. Like, you really want to chop that thing's head off. Ninja Blade is basically split into all these different directions. First, we'll hit the main gameplay. Basically, it's a hack and slash action game. It's nothing special, but it does its job, and it has enough combos to get your combo loving out there, or whatever you say, you elitist fans. Um, you have three different weapons. The very fast, uh, two-bladed weapons that whoosh, slash, like, slash. So it's, it's awesome. Then you got your regular blade, which is, you know, the main weapon. It's not as fast as the others, but it's way stronger than the others, but not as strong as your big-ass weapon, which is possibly the best big weapon to ever use. I personally find this weapon to be great. It has real power, and when you hit someone with it, it's like you just knock their fucking body in half, literally. So, all three weapons bring this different feeling to the gameplay. Switching in and out mid-combat looks great, and each one has their own personal finisher, which is just very kick-ass. For all three of them, they look great. Um... That's the main gameplay, and you'll get an idea with all these different combos how to use them. You also have magic in this game. Basically, you use your big-ass shuriken as a different magic, such as fire, wind, lightning. And you use these to not only help you get past environmental things, but also get past enemies by using a wind tunnel that goes around you and basically slashes all your enemies, or shoot a fireball, or uh, use lightning to stun them and then, you know, kill them. So, all of them are very useful in different ways. You also do some platforming such as running on walls and jumping on um, poles to jump to the next place. Nothing special and it's not too much in the game so you don't have to worry about that if you don't like it. You also have in this game what I like to call quick time events. People don't like quick time events. It's simple as that. They just don't like clicking a button when it's giving you the thing. I do when the game is as epic as this shit. As I stated in the beginning of my review, 
This shit is as epic as God of War, especially in the quick time events. I think it surpasses it. Not only does this guy do these beautiful, beautiful finishers, such as slashing an enemy's fucking head in half, he also, he also stops a motherfucking plane. Yes, and the best part is, it's as epic as Raiden stopping a ship in Metal Gear Solid 4 or God of War when you kill, almost kill Zeus. So really it comes down to if you can stand quick time events. If you can, if you can enjoy them, if they're done well, like God of War, this is by far one of the funnest quick time event moments and some of the most epic moments in gaming history. Sadly, enjoyability split into two things for me. One is how much I enjoyed it. I'll get to this first. I enjoyed this game a lot. It was a great ride. It was action packed. It felt like you were playing through an awesome fucking ninja movie. All these awesome moves you do, dodging bullets, slashing enemies in half that are billion times your size. It was just a great ride. And I enjoyed every moment except for maybe the last boss because he was a bitch. But that's always in every game. So, this did a very good job of keeping me entertained. This is the bad part, for about 8 hours. To me, that's enough because I'm going to replay it on hard mode to get achievements and unlock the new weapons. For some people, it's not. 8 to 10 hours, that's all you're going to play in this game. Yes, Ninja Gaiden 2 is longer, and maybe Devil May Cry 4 by a bit. If you could accept the 8 hours, I'm only taking a point off for that because it is short for a lot of people. This game is an action-packed game that you do not want to miss. This is the God of War on the 360. I do not care what any magazine says. I have not played an epic game on my 360 like this since God of War 2. Okay? The end. That's my final fucking sentence for this kick-ass action game. So I hope you enjoy the review and pick up Ninja Blade as soon as you can.